And thank you all for being here today. Uh, Joe and I will give you some uh, more tips on accessibility in Blackboard. Uh, for those of you that have maybe attended some of uh, the other sessions that have been done this month, April has been designated as Accessibility Month. And um, if you've been to any of Lauren or Jason's um, sessions, they have presented a lot of information about accessibility. These are just um, kind of, uh, you know, some tips on accessibility. It's not the full robust training session on accessibility, but I think you'll find them useful. And, you know, we ask that you just start out with a few little tips um, and then go from there. Ask questions and learn more as we go along. So anything else you'd like to say, Joe, before we look at um, the intro? No, not really, just that this is uh, hopefully a quick hit. We're gonna try to get through it in, at this point now, 25 minutes. And I think we all know each other, so we can yes. get the intro and um, just talk about what we're gonna do. Go right ahead. Okay, so um, this is just a little introduction to follow up about what we're going to be covering today. We're going to review a few of the more common features of accessibility that are easily um, added to your courses. You can easily um, perform these functions and it could be a start and maybe there's something new you didn't know about. We will look at um, text and images in courses that need to be accessible to all learners, uh, not just those with disabilities, it's just for everyone. And sometimes you don't even know that a student has a disability uh, in the class. So we encourage you to um, incorporate some of these tips that you'll see today. Uh, most importantly, images and graphs uh, should be described with the alt tag, or you can also use an audio description if you know for sure um, that, especially that someone um, is visually impaired, you can also give an audio description along with your tags and um, with your graphs and images. And that's also important for tables. So here's just a quick agenda, what we wanna cover. Um, we just did a bit of an introduction. Uh, we're gonna show you a very quick accessibility uh, video that Joe found. Uh, we'll look at the Blackboard Accessibility uh, Checker, which is located in the content editor in Blackboard and show you how you, you know, this is one simple way for you to check accessibility before you click that button to post something. Um, this is uh, an easy way to check content. We'll show you some examples and we have a few um, websites that we've used for this training. Um, you'll have access to those. And then finally, we will wrap up and ask questions. You can ask any questions, answer. Also, as we're going along, just um, we're pretty informal, so stop us and ask a question if you need to. So I'll stop right there. Any questions so far? All right. So. Joe, it's I'm possible that some of this information is a little bit repetitive for if you go through a few of the other accessibility April events. Right. All right. So, Joe, I'm going to turn this over to you. So, uh, hey, um, I didn't actually have it up. I'm sorry, Sandy. Um, let me. You want me? I can play. I can. Yeah, but you can't play it from there unless you just highlight it and go to a web page. Oh. We're just going to click it from there or go into show mode on the PowerPoint and then you'll be able to click it. Okay. Sorry about Give me that. a minute. All right. So very quick video, but it's very good. And we were going to slow it down if you want to when you, when you get there. Okay. It's opening. Is it possible you don't have it? the share done with your entire computer, your entire desktop, because I don't see anything yet. All right, let me share again. I'm so sorry about that. Do you want your visitors to browse your website like this? Or do you want to watch this video? 
And while she's doing that, I just want to say that this particular video is related to websites in general. But believe it or not, that's what Blackboard is. Uh, we call it a learning management system. Most websites are considered content management systems, but they're all built on the same structure and the HTML, et cetera. Um, so if you go to your settings, did you do that already, Sandy? You want to uh, start to 75, the gear? Oh, I, I did not. Yeah, this was yeah. pretty quick. So uh, let's see if we can check the speed. Playback speed. We'll go to 75. Yeah. Um, when and it then, said in 60 seconds or less, trust me, it mm -hmm. went probably 50 seconds. It was so quick. So I slowed it, it down. Why don't you make it full screen there? Okay. And it looks like you're not at the beginning. All right, let's see. Still not. There, that's good. Do you want your visitors to browse your website like this? Or do you want to watch this video? <laughs> or if I told you that in order to check out, you have to hit the green button, could you? Not without being frustrated. And this is why I'm going to tell you about the importance of web accessibility in one minute. So what is web accessibility? It's the idea that technology must be equally accessible for people with and without disabilities, and that any barriers to accessing the web are removed. High five, Sir TVL. Who are we helping when we make our sites accessible? Visitors with visual disabilities, such as low vision or colorblindness, auditory disabilities, such as deafness, cognitive and neurological disabilities, which can include visitors with learning disabilities or people affected by seizures, and physical and motor disabilities, such as repetitive stress injury or muscular dystrophy. Not to mention, it can also enhance various other experiences, like visitors on a slow internet connection. But how do we make our sites accessible? Luckily, we have established standards to follow. These best practices show us the importance of having semantic heading structures to ensuring proper color contrast to providing text alternatives for video content. Now that you're ready to start making your website accessible, start digging in by checking out the Lighthouse Audit in Chrome DevTools to see where you can start improving your site. And that. Okay, yeah, we're not going to go into that. Um, particular tool that she's talking about, but we'll show you some other um, tools as we um, as we go along. All right. So, any questions? Can you see why we turned it down a little bit? It was so um, it was so quick before we could barely understand what she was saying. This might have might have seemed a little slow. Um, but remember, that's also another important feature too. If you know that there are some students in your class that have auditory issues, uh, sometimes they really can't hear very well if, if the video is going very quickly or if the sound is too low or uh, you know there's any background noise. So um, we thought that was a good e example for you to say. So and while down. before you jump off of this, Sandy, let me say too that um, we could have put on the closed caption uh, visual there for uh, any learners that would like it, whether the, again they are disabled in some way or some people just like to actually see the writing go across as the speaker is speaking in any video. Okay, so let me go back and share again. Okay. All right. So we talk a little bit here about um, improved don't, accessibility. Don't see the PowerPoint yet. Can you see it now? Nope. I shared, I reshared. Hang on, you don't see any of this? No, just video right now. Sorry, all right, let me do this again. I can do it. Sharing the screen. How about now? 
Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, with the Blackboard upgrade, um, you can now check accessibility, as I mentioned before, uh, with the new accessibility uh, checker. So go ahead, Joe, and take it away. So, uh, you may have been aware that in Blackboard, um, November the 5th of last year, uh, a big change in the content editor occurred. And uh, there was a lot of different things um, that, that brought with it. But in particular, we're going to speak about the accessibility information or capabilities therein. Um, one thing besides the actual checker itself is that generally this whole content editor is much more accessible for a variety of reasons than the old one was. So we, Blackboard definitely needed a refresh on that particular content editor as a whole. And you may also have noticed that it seems like there's some capabilities that either were taken away or changed or whatever. And again, that was probably because uh, the way that it was being used before the feature wasn't exactly fully accessible. And now this particular content editor is. The content editor is actually one that was derived from an open source, um, well-evolved tool called Tiny MCE, and I don't mean to get too technical here, but we're actually going to show you that in a minute, just so you know. And it, it uses the WCAG 2.0 guidelines to do the checking. So it's, it's, it's kind of robust. It certainly isn't going to capture every little thing, but it certainly will give your particular item that you're creating uh, a quick check over and let you know if anything doesn't seem ready for prime time on the accessibility spectrum. So um, that's, that's really what I have to say here. So let's just go to the next slide, Sandy. And this is a graphic of what it looks like in any content editor, um, particularly on the toolbar in the content editor in Blackboard. You're looking for what Sandy calls that construction guy who's you know hanging out on the street where uh, the, the, with the slow and the stop sign, that's what she thinks that is. And it's usually down on the bottom row of the toolbar, all right? And um, that toolbar probably looks different than it used to last year. And um, again, uh, what, some of those tools are just beefed up and some of them are, are, have been changed for general accessibility purposes. But what we're looking for actually is the use of the accessibility checker which is that man icon. All right, so let's see how we can find that in a course. So if you'll stop sharing, Sandy, is, uh, I'll tell you what, I have a course up. I'll just use the course that I have. Okay, and um, I also just want to mention, and maybe you'll show this when you go into Blackboard, if mm -hmm. your content editor doesn't look like this, maybe you only have one line for your, that top line only for the content editor, what you'll need to do is just expand it and you should have all three lines that you can um, work with. And that's where you can find that little accessibility checker um, on the bottom. So go ahead, Joe. Thanks. Feel free to share. Feel free to move about the cabin. I don't know what commercial that's from. Let's go over here. All right, can you see my course? Uh, not yet. Uh, what's that? I think sharing is slow today or something. How about now? Um, it's coming. Yes, we All can right. see it. Yep. All right. So we're just in a demo course here. And <clears throat> you may not realize it, but that content editor as a tool or feature inside a Blackboard is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So pretty typically, you're probably in learning content. And from learning content, you can easily just uh, build an item and any one of the items that you build basically are available. There's always a content editor in there. So if we just do a standard item, when we bring it up, you can see that after you've actually placed a name or a title for that item, you now have the content editor. And lo and behold, here is our construction worker. Um, where else might we find it? Uh, when you're doing discussions, whether you're replying and this is the same for your students. They have the same content editor. Um, let me see if I can try that again. 
go to discussion, please. Thank you. <laughs> my mouse isn't, it's not responding to my mouse clicks. So if you are, you already have a, an item or you're creating an item in the discussion board, same thing. Here it shows up. Um, one other area I wasn't sure of that I'm going to jump to real quick. Hey, how about a test question? Because sometimes we put images in tests or a few other things, and it's a good idea to test it out there. So if we look at the editing of a test question, we'll notice that we have the entire content editor there as well and can use the accessibility checker in that spot. I think it's coming. There it goes. Lo and behold. And last but not least, um, and I don't know how many people actually do feedback if you're in the grade center. So if I have an item in the grade center and I want to give a student some feedback, let's say, how about this reading assignment here? We always can make a quick comment. And that comment brings up a simple editor. But if we want to, we can bring up a full editor. And of course, we're going to get all the tools here as well. Now, more than likely, you're not going to have too many things in feedback to students in their grades that would be concerning as far as accessibility. But um, one of the big things that just bumps out right away would be contrast, for instance. If, if you don't have good contrast between the background and the text color, then certainly you're going to get a flag on that. So uh, we obviously have something here. Let's just click the accessibility checker. And it says, hey, everything's cool. No problem, nothing to do. All right, so that's where you're going to find it in your course. And those are only a few places. Uh, pretty much anytime, anywhere that you're going to add some type of content, that's where you're going to find the entire content editor and the accessibility checker. All right. Um, let me turn it back to you, Sandy, and bring the PowerPoint back up. Yep. A little, little tennis game here, flip flop. Yes. Okay, so the next thing that we uh, want to show you and want to talk about is, um, again, the Blackboard Accessibility Checker um, in the Content Editor. And these are some accessibility examples that are used with the accessibility checker plugin that Joe was um, talking about before. So um, it's that little tiny um, MCE that is built into uh, Blackboard. So did you want to see this again, Joe? Yeah, you know what, I, uh, I do have it up so I can take the share back. But before I do, um, you could see through the bulleted list, uh, there's about six different types of things that the accessibility checker, when you click on it, will look for. So uh, headings are an important piece because it really does help when you're doing a screen reader and other things. Uh, that contrast is very um, important for, um, for uh, visual learners. And of course, the as Sandy mentioned at the beginning, alt text. Um, also, if the links aren't formatted well, it certainly will point that out and allow you to make some changes there. So let's look at the actual uh, accessibility checker plugin, which is, uh, we're not going to show you in Blackboard, but this has like a website for it. And there's some interactive examples here that will show you what will happen when you hit some of these types of issues in your content. So I'll take the screen share back, Sandy. Thank you. All right, let me bring this guy over into the picture. All right, can we see the accessibility checker plugin? Yes. Good. And this is actually the Tiny MCE website, and this is their interactive example of the actual tool. So here's their man, our checker. And what, what we can do is we can look at each of these items and um, see what it brings up. So if we click the checker once, 
This tells us that we have one of 11 issues on this page. So the first thing is it says, this paragraph looks like a heading. And if it is, let's choose a heading level tool. All right, so if we need to change that, we certainly can pick a particular type of heading level. These are um, standard text formatting headings that you'll find in something like Word and other text editors. And Tiny MCE is a text editor and has these capabilities as well. So the familiarity if you use tools like this in Word uh, is applied here right within when you're using the editor in Blackboard. So we'll just pick that one and we'll say repair. So it put a more of a header up here for this particular guy. Now it went to another one and it says, hey, this particular ID attribute must be unique. Notice that it flags it with a little bit of a color here. It's pink, all right? But we're going to say, hey, let's not worry about that. Let's just ignore it. And then it brings us to the next one. Oh, there's an image here. Does it have some significance? Does it need alt text? Nah, maybe it's just decorative and we can click that and repair it. And then we go to um, some link for a URL. And we're just going to ignore that. The idea of just doing this is so you can see the different kinds of things. Ah, text must have a contrast ratio of at least seven to one. So it's looking here. So it might be a good idea for us to actually apply a change of text here. Um, again, you can change the background or you can change the color of the text or the boldness of the text to get that contrast ratio up. The selected text, text appears to be a list. Now here's a good one. So sometimes we want to make sure that we have this list formatted properly. And in order to do so, I think I might have just taken me out of this little interactive thing here. I apologize for that by doing that. But um, you know, making sure that your formatted lists are actually bulleted lists are, are much better. And if you use the bulleting tools that are right here in the editor, that is going to be very helpful for accessibility. In other words, don't put in your own dash or some type of mark like this asterisk here. Make it a real bullet. And of course, you can choose from different kinds of bullets typically too. I can't recall exactly how much capability you have right here inside this particular editor, but that would be okay. All right, let's see if this is gonna let me start where I was. Oh yeah, good. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and we'll ignore that one, go down to this one. Again, another ordered list. Uh, actually, it's talking about heading in this case. So let's just make this one, um, well, it's not allowing us to actually change it. Um, and then um, we have another list. Here's another contrast. And here we have a table. This is, I guess, probably typical where tables aren't normally structured as well when you put something like that in the editor or even in a Word doc. And it's a good idea if you're sharing a Word doc out to somebody too that you apply some good principles for that as well. So either providing some captions or making sure that there is a, an actual header row would be appropriate for tables. And the same thing here. So it actually showed you that there were two issues in this particular table. All right, that's our demonstration of the different kinds of things that you might find if you did the accessibility checker on your content when you were actually placing something inside your Blackboard. And Stacy just noticed, says, I had no idea about this feature. <laughs> oh, that's great. And actually, you know, um, it's important because if a student is using a screen reader, the screen reader, um, if you don't have table headers in, it's just a bunch of words. This, you know, they need to know, oh, this is table, you know, uh, the header for this um, column and the header for the next column in order for, you know, for it to be read properly. And the so, same for headers in, in the text itself, even if it's not a, a table, the right. headers will better exemplify and, and read out to the student 
that this is the beginning of a new section or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to take you back and just show you a couple more things that were already mentioned, but uh, there is a, a website uh, that you um, can use. It's called Web AIM, and I, I'm pretty sure we have this um, as one of the resources, but there is a contrast checker, a colorblindness tech, uh, checker, and an alt uh, text check checker. So let me see if you can see this and I'll give you an example of what a student may see. Can you see this or do I need to reshare? Well, all we're seeing is the PowerPoint right oh, okay. now. Okay. And I'm going to put I, the website link into the into the chat. This is just a very good website in general. Web yeah, Web AIM is what um, it's pretty a pretty common site. So now can you see? Yes. Okay, so this is this will give you an idea of um, what a student um, with visual issues would be seeing um, if you don't have the right contrast. So right now you can see uh, there's normal text, large text. Uh, you see that the foreground color is this blue and the background color is white. And you can see that, you know, listed here in Blackboard, we have black print on a white background, or I, I just never think it's dark enough, but um, that's, you know, the contrast that we use. So I'm going to change um, this a little bit um, to show you what it would look like if the font wasn't um, strong enough. So as I move this back, can you see the difference? Um, in this top box here, also a little bit in the second box with large text. That doesn't make uh, too much of a difference. But if I start playing around um, with this, um, you'll see that I'm failing because I have dark text on a dark background. And that's not sure good for visually impaired, impaired. So let me turn this, um, change the background color again. And as I, you know, even make it lighter, um, it doesn't work for normal text. It's not too bad for the large text. So it's always good to keep both um, in the, uh, you know, where it passes. So either dark background with light font or uh, a darker font with a lighter background. So that's just an example of the contrast um, checker. I also want to show you colorblindness, whether you have um, seen this before. Let's see, colorblindness. And of course there are technical terms that I'm not aware of, but there are red-green deficiencies and it's got a name protonopia. Uh, that's when the cones in the eye properly uh, respond or malfunction with greens. And if you can see the difference here, you'll see normally what this picture would look like. And if it was missing uh, the green, it looks a little different on the right. You see more of the gold and not enough of um, the red. The next example is with um, other types of of um, deficiencies. And this one is a blue deficiency. That's not too bad. Not too bad, but you kind of miss all of the um, gold here and the red. So that's just an example of why it's important to use um, colors that, you know, the red and the greens you need to be careful of because not everybody um, can see that. So the next one that I'm going to show you is all text. <clears throat> and um, I like this. There's a couple of examples here that you can see. And again, um, so concept, context is everything, of course. Here's an example of a picture of George Washington. And um, this, you know, picture is just a uh, an image of George Washington. It could be labeled as image of George Washington or simply George Washington. And that's what the screen reader would pick up uh, when it was going over that image. 
Um, you should always, and of course, be su as succinct as you can, depending on what you're teaching um, or what your co course is about. Um, this has a longer explanation uh, because of his role in, as the commander in chief um, and later the first president of the United States, George Washington is often called the father of the country. So uh, the best option here is a George Washington, an empty alt attribute alt equals will suffice, just an image. Um, they think that the best um, example of the alt text would be George Washington. And then sometimes you can put in too much text. Um, so let me take you down to this image here. And this would be an example. Um, so here's a very, very nice image of George Washington, you know, um, crossing the Delaware River. So which do you think, just look at these, and which of these would be your best choice for all text? Anybody? It's a picture of George Washington, very nice picture of, of George Washington. The uh, description here is talking about using light color form perspective and all of that. I go with C. You go with C, painting, okay, why? Is that you, Gail? Yeah, why? Um, well, because A is too general. There's a lot more people there than George Washington. There is, millions of paintings of George Washington. <laughs> so um, C is the one that gives you enough information without giving you too much information. Absolutely, you win the prize. Um, that, that very aptly describes what the picture is. Um, you know, the E is, is entirely too much information. Um, you know, you don't need to give all of that, but a student using a, a, a screen reader would, they don't need to know about the color and the light, but they do need to know that that's George Washington um, crossing the Delaware. So uh, these are just, um, this is just a quick way, you know, if you're not sure of what kind of alt text to put on something or what kind of contrast, you can go to this website and um, try it out. So any questions about this quick little demo? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, I take that as a no, and I'm just going to go back. Um, and we had, whoops, we have one more, just one more slide, which is our um, wrap up slide. And we'll talk to you just a minute about, about that as well. So let me go back. Any questions? Any questions? I try Can to you... remember is as you're creating content in Blackboard, just uh, click the man before you submit. Click before you submit and then just make sure that everything seems okay using that quick accessibility checker. So have either of you used this at all? Or actually I should say, were you aware of the accessibility checker in Blackboard? I saw him there, but <laughs> Frankly, he was just another thing to learn, and I didn't click on it. I've got this huge to-do list for the summer. Okay. Uh, and the the uh, twirling man was the construction worker was. Uh, <laughs> I call on the construction, and I wonder if Blackboard even has a name name for this. I don't know, but I call him a construction worker. All he needed was his little hat. And they look like one. Well, we need to come up, uh, a construction worker works, but um, just need to come up with a gender neutral name. Oh, uh, well. Penny and I were trying to figure out a name so that we could apply to this little tagline, you know, click, click Rick before yeah. you submit or something like that. But. <laughs> All right, well, I do not have um, anything more to add. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, in the chat. Um, we can send this um, um, PowerPoint to you. And those two resources are actually from Blackboard Help. So 
uh, some pretty good information in there regarding, you know, content in general, but accessibility in particular as well. Yeah, so um, we hope you, you know, can use this if it makes sense to you. Um, it's always good um, to check what you're writing. Um, you know, there's so much more um, with accessibility, but this is just something quick that you can use within Blackboard. So thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Yep. Thanks for being here. You, Have a good day. We'll send you the PowerPoint and Thanks. good luck. Bye. Thank you.